Hello YouTubers, <clears throat> I've been casting a cold and critical eye on media again. <sighs> yes, it's um, the nearest thing I will come to a Christmas video, I think. Um, <laughs> it's a question of dismantling <clears throat> more propaganda on formal media from a particular program. It was actually broadcast um, some time ago, but um, about the Holy Land. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Anyway, let's go straight to it. And you're very welcome to this Christmas edition of Nationwide coming to you from the Holy Land. We're in Manger Square in Bethlehem, just outside the church of the Nativity, which is said to contain the very cave in which uh, Jesus Christ was born. We'll be bringing you to the Mount of Olives, the Garden of Gethsemane, along the Via Dolorosa, and to the Western Wall, or Wailing Wall, sacred to the Jewish faith. Well now the countdown to Christmas in Ireland is in its final days and we take you on a journey throughout the Holy Land. You see the problem with Jerusalem was always going to be that unlike other great cities and civilization like Paris on the Seine, London on the Thames or any other great city civilization people it's a, it's a detail often lost on people that Jerusalem is up in the mountains so it would never ever have a really commercial significance yes it's on the sort of the, the, the silk trade or the silk route, but it was up in the mountains, not on the coast. So its significance was always going to be political slash spiritual, if you will. It's a bizarre location, more of a defensive location, and it, it kind of remains ideologically that way to this, to this day. Father, this is where the whole uh, of Christianity began. Yes, it is. It's been well investigated, and the church behind us is built over the northwest corner of first century Bethlehem. What uh, the big piazza which we're standing, Manger Square, that was a little valley. The cave, which is enshrined in the church, is the cave. Archaeology has shown that at the time of the birth of Christ, about 6 BC, it was used for stabling and storage. The cave is not mentioned in the New Testament. Of course there were caves around that part of the world at that time. Um, that, but just because it's a cave seems to sort of, that validates everything. And he says himself, the learned father, the learned padre, the learned priest, but it's not mentioned in the New Testament. There's a lot of things not mentioned in the New Testament. You know, I'd love to go into it in really rich detail with you in the style of a man called Richard Carrier. Carrier, yeah, spelled like aircraft carrier. I put a link below the two of the videos I've seen uh, of his stuff recently, some lectures and debates he was in, very good stuff. I just don't want to, I would like to go into videos like that and go into great detail. It's just that I have a fear that nobody would ever watch them, especially not those who believe, the believers. It's kind of like, excuse the expression, pissing against the wind. Here's another one that I uh, object to, like from the Bible, oftentimes pertinent to this time of year. Do you know the famous expression? It's in the carols and all that, and they say, you know, and peace to all men. Well, do you know something from the original translation from the Greek in this? Um, it doesn't actually say peace to all men. It says peace to men of good will. Now, that may seem semantic to you linguistically, but there is a really great difference. What the writer is saying is, no, 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 it's not a free-for-all that every, we love everyone. It's a peace to men of good will, only those people who qualify. There's a great difference in that, and it has made all the difference in the evolution of Christianity. Anyway, back to business. And it's a remarkable thing, uh, you see the name places around here, that you can walk in the footsteps of Christ. You can make the observations on which he based his parables. You can walk the routes. You can see the Roman milestones. You can see the cuttings in the rock. You come very close to history. That's why you have no skeptics in the Holy Land. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. Uh, I was there as a believer and as a skeptic. The thing about it is, by this is whitewashing, you see? The learned father, you, it's like you're led into this confidence trick. It's like, there you can see the Roman ruins. Yes, you can. You can see old Roman roads. Yes, you can. You can see lots of things Roman. You can see Byzantine things. You can see, well, going way back in history, you can see, you know, the Babylonians uh, invaded a couple of times, Nebuchadnezzar. You can see lots of things. But, um, but just because you cherry pick and say, you know, that, that they're in the Bible or something, or that you can see the ruins, does not qualify the Christian myth 
or the Islamic myth. It doesn't. It's just layered upon reality, bullshit laid upon um, reality. But it's a really good confidence trick. I felt it myself when I was a believer in Jerusalem. Roman roads. So the Romans were here, so if the Romans were here, Jesus was here. Case closed. As you move around this land, it uh, seems that there isn't a square foot of it that doesn't have some sort of a story. And those stories dredge up names we remember, of course, from our days in religious education class. And the man who knows all about this land, of course, is biblical scholar Father Jerome. Father, um, looking out on this land, we're on a hill, but this is a hill with a, a special significance. We're standing at the top of the Mount of Olives. It was from here that Jesus ascended into heaven. It is here that the Messiah is expected to return. The valley behind us is the Valley of Josaphat, the Kedron Valley, hence all the graves, and this is where everyone comes together. There are Jewish graves below us, and the far side of the valley are Muslim graves, and there are two small Christian graveyards in the very bottom. If it was from here on the Mount of Olives that Jesus ascended into heaven. You see, you, you, like, it's not to say this program is a little bit partisan, is it? And it's not a, a religious affairs program. It was from here that Jesus ascended into heaven. And he can say that with a straight face. The last five stations of the cross are actually inside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre here. And this has been a place of veneration since the 4th century because inside the church you'll find Golgotha, the hill of Calvary. This is the very spot where Jesus Christ was crucified and was buried. And the first thing that hits you, when you remember now you're a believer, and the first thing that hits you as you enter the tomb, of the actual tomb they found empty, um, you know, on that Easter morning, um, the first thing is a Coptic priest has his hand out begging for money. And you can't exactly say to him, okay, mate, uh, can you give me a second? Like, I've come all the way to Jerusalem, like, you're probably from halfway around the globe, come for this moment, and I'm all spiritual, and I'm all, I'm on a high, and, and oh, sorry, Wait a minute, yeah, okay, um, let me see if I got some loose change or something. Hand out, really, a money racket, everybody, a money racket. And I swear, it was one of the things that shook up my faith, even at the time, I thought, this is really cheap. About the Holy Sepulchre Church itself, um, five or six different uh, Christian denominations share it and have done forever and ever. To show how Christian uh, solidarity works, since the 1300s, a Muslim family and to this day they still do it, were entrusted uh, to close the church at night, put up a ladder, climb out, and a Muslim family are trusted with closing and opening the church because the Christians squabble and fought so much about who should have the keys. Christian love, Christian solidarity. Don't you just love that? Allahu Akbar the great esplanade is the esplanade of Herod's Temple. The Golden Dome marks the rock from which Muhammad, after having prayed with Jesus and other prophets, ascended into heaven, had a conversation with God the Father, and then returned to earth and went back to Mecca. It always struck me when I lived in the Middle East, both in Israel and uh, serving in, in Lebanon. Um, Lebanon too is the Holy Land and areas around there, Syria, Jordan, all mentioned in the Bible, Egypt of course. But it always struck me when I served in Lebanon, most poignantly, um, that the, the ancient city of Tyre, for example, the old Crusader castle, back 2000 years ago, although uh, Beirut is the capital today, it didn't really exist, it was a village. But the point is, I. The poignancy of that for me, the Holy Land. Well, when I lived out there, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters and comrades, it didn't seem very holy to me. I'm going to be cheeky to illustrate that point, not to impress you, but just to emphasize that I do know what I'm talking about. Um, this is a little uh, photo montage video that I made for a DVD that I made. Uh, it's a bio thingy. I'm going to insert it here to give you a flavor.
So in resume, everybody, the central reason I made this video, besides the obvious objections as an atheist I would have, is the liberties that uh, these program makers take. I want to stress to you in this Irish program, it's called Nationwide, that it is not a religious affairs program. It's a general spectrum uh, program. Um, but it's just that the liberties they took in an editorial stance on it, um, that's what I object to. As I said before, you know, you cannot just stand in a place and say, um, Jesus did this here, like bona fide fact. You know, you can say things like the British government is located in London. We can prove that, but um, I kind of object to that. Um, and that's what pisses me off. And that's why I make these videos. They can't get away with it. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. That brings us to the end of this special Christmas edition of Nationwide coming to you from the Holy Land. It's been an extraordinary year in Ireland, of course, but we do hope that this evening's programme will have gone some way to help lift up your spirits as we enter a new season, a new year, and hopefully a new beginning. We wish you a very happy and peaceful Christmas. Thank you for all your support during the year, and we look forward to bringing you lots more Nationwide programmes as we journey with you, our viewers, all around the country of Ireland. Agus, on the Hainer of Warren, Gatia Gui, Don Avlian. Happy Christmas. Christmas. A very good evening.